So this is a mesh Wi-Fi system with Wi-Fi 7 that is designed to increase the range and speed of our home Wi-Fi network. I manage speeds of 1500 megabits per second over Wi-Fi and if connected via cable we will be able to get 2500 megabits per second. I spread one unit on each floor of the house, one here on the basement, one on the ground floor and one on the first floor to try and understand the advantages and limits of of this kit. I also ran some end of test which measured the time that it takes to switch from one unit to another. So if you still have a router from your internet and TV provider and you are on one corner of the house and you say okay I don't have signal here, I don't have signal here, I need to go here to capture signal then forget about it because this kit will be able to extend our signal. It's called the TP-Link Deco B 25. Now inside the package there are three units but there's also a two unit pack and you can buy additional units individually and later on you can expand the signal even more. It comes with the installation guide, one power adapter per unit and a network cable. Each unit has two 2.5 gig Ethernet ports and a very simple design that can be placed on any furniture and it goes unnoticed. Now connecting it is very simple, just connect the units to the power adapter adapters and one of them must be connected to our router via cable. Then we install the TP-Link Deco app and as soon as we open it will automatically detect the Deco B25 and from there just follow the steps, choose our Wi-Fi network name and in 2-3 minutes the system is up and running. When you connect the other units the system will detect them automatically and will add them to the mesh network. And to make management easier we can also rename each unit as I did so that later on I can identify which floor each one is on. And now we can place each unit in the area of the house where we want the best Wi-Fi signal and that's it. They will connect via Wi-Fi but they will also connect via Ethernet cable between them and that's called the Ethernet backhaul. We have tested some systems. This one right over here is interesting because I can use it the regular way which is most of people will have the limitation that don't have cable spread around the house so we can connect this one to the router and this one here on a strategic place and this one here on another strategic place and they will communicate between Wi-Fi and we will have a really awesome coverage as we will have the chance to see. But if I have the chance like I do in my own house to connect via cable this one, this one and this one we will be able to take full advantage of everything that they have including using it as a router which which is the classic way to do it but one of my favorite ways to use them is as an access point and as an access point we will be able to use as well Ethernet backhaul which is something that we don't find on every system so I was really happy once I did test it out. I'm going to share with you some speed tests that I did perform using it on the classical way which is to connect this one to my main router and these two via Wi-Fi and I will also share some speed tests that I did using them connected via Ethernet cable so that you can see the difference and how much more we can get out of them. So starting with the maximum speed that I achieved via Wi-Fi that were 1500 megabits per second download and upload and this speed might be higher or lower depending on our equipment. Now connecting one unit via the Ethernet cable here on the basement and the office area where I stand is about 40 square meters, the speeds on the same room hit 500 megabits per second which by the way this is the maximum of my connection so we will not be able to see more on this test. Now moving to the gym on the same level with walls and doors in between around 80 to 90 square meters in total I was getting about 270 megabits per second downloads and 150 megabits per second uploads. Moving to the backyard which is on the same level here of the basement and a total area of 220 meters speeds were reaching about 250 megabits per second download and 150 megabits per second on upload. So for houses with up to 100 square meters 
200 if you don't have barriers like I don't have on the backyard you will only need one of these units and it will do a great job having in mind that the configuration of this 100 square meters plus 220 I don't have many barriers I've got these walls right over here a few doors and that's basically it now I did repeat the same test but this time on the ground floor which is a more typical home configuration the router is at one hand and and on the same room I did achieve the maximum speeds without any issues whatsoever in the garage which is nearby around 400 megabits per second in the entrance all back to the 500 megabits per second more or less at the opposite end on the living room which is exactly on the end of the house compared to where the router is located I was getting 500 megabits per second and this was a important factor because the living room is where we have the smart TV the TV box and whatnot and where people spend time with tablets mobile phones laptops and so on so on the ground floor balcony I also got around 200 megabits per second download and 100 upload and then moving to the kitchen area at the entrance I still get 180 megabits per second but further into the kitchen which has two zones the signal weakens and it is due to the walls that we have right over there it's a huge barrier it's the stairs and walls and whatnot this is the biggest barrier that I've got here on my house so for the kitchen usually what I use is a TP-Link Archer Air R5 which I did share before so speeds right over there drop about 10 to 30 megabits per second just using this unit on the ground floor depending on the area that we are on the kitchen now moving ahead to the front garden area the signal is weak and unstable tp-link gxe75 if you check out the review you will see link will be down below that this unit right over here on the same location that the deco b25 was is able to reach on the garden and it has a little bit better signal on the kitchen although I do use this as my main router and I do use the Archer Air R5 as a access point to extend the signal on my kitchen so links down below as well so that you can compare but if you are deciding and if you have an area very similar to mine and you need to go to the garden which some of you might say why the garden I would say because I do have smart video doorbells and I've got smart devices right over there to automate lights and things like that and those need wi-fi signals so that's for me is something important then you should consider that one if you don't then you will be just fine with one of these now moving to the first floor and the unit on the first floor is connected only via wi-fi and on the same room we were able to achieve 130 megabits per second on download and 100 on upload so we can see the difference here on the same room connected just via Wi-Fi on the second room 80 download 40 uploads on the third room 80 downloads 30 uploads on the balconies of the first floor 30 downloads and 20 upload which is more than enough to stream content while sunbathing now if we move here to the basement and disconnect the cable so at this moment of the test what I do have is one unit on the ground floor connected via cable one unit on the first floor which we just seen connected via just Wi-Fi and now this unit right over here connected here on the basement just via Wi-Fi so here on the office exactly in the same position that I did before 110 megabits per second of downloads and 50 of upload so you can see the difference that we get so the signal is good but it's not the best that we were achieving directly connected with the cable now on the gym room I was getting 70 download 40 upload and on the backyard roughly 100 download but only two or three on the upload side so even though I do have coverage of 90% of the house using them on this configuration wired Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi 
The difference is huge. So if you have the chance to get a cable to connect all of them, then that, that will be a huge difference. Out of curiosity, just to finish up this test, I also connected the unit upstairs via cable because I do have that chance. And on the room where it is located, maximum 500 megabits per second, no surprise at all. Second room, 440 megabits per second downloads and 150 upload. On the third room, 460 downloads, 150 uploads. On the balconies, 170 download and 30 upload. So it's a huge difference when we have access to the unit connected via cable. Nonetheless, we can have, at least on this house configuration, which is quite a large house, more or less 500 square meters of area, I was able to achieve 90% of coverage, more or less, using the three units. And I'm talking about one wired unit, Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi. And I was sharing with you the speed test, which is something that is more graphical, so that you can check out on that side of the screen where we can reach. But if I was doing regular stuff, just watching Netflix, on my Android TV box or watching something on my phone, YouTube, one of these videos in 4K and whatnot, I was able to do that on most of the house. And probably if there is one corner or another on that, I was not really achieving what I want. I always have the chance to get another deco. It doesn't need to be the B25. You can get the X10, which we have covered right over here, and they are cheaper with less coverage, less speed than whatnot. But if it's just a small area, then we can add later on and solve that issue. So the point is that if you are not going to do speed tests, you will watch Netflix just fine, you will have internet just fine to browse your computer, send emails, upload files, even upload a video in 4K to YouTube like I'm recording right now. Now the mobile app is the TP-Link Deco, which we have seen right over here, very complete. It shows information about the units, whether they are connected via Wi-Fi or Ethernet, connected clients, allows to change the Wi-Fi settings really easily, enables MLO, which is multi-link operation, to use both bands simultaneously, it provides security info, parental control, and in the advanced menu, you can control access at guest networks, IoT networks, use it as a router or as an access point, and even as an access point, you will be able to use the Ethernet backhaul. Now, we have seen some systems in the past which we will be able to use backhaul with our Wi Fi, but no backhaul via Ethernet when we change to the access point mode. So let's imagine this configuration. I've got this main router on my house, I've got my network configured, and by some reason I did decide, besides having this router, I want to have these three to expand my capabilities. One of the ways that I can do that really easily is to configure this in just one button. Select router or select access point, and once I choose access point, Point, it will receive the information via the cable of my network and if I connect to this one right over here which is on one end of the house I will have access to all my smart devices everything that I do have access when I was connecting directly to this one right over here and the only thing that I do is to change the Wi-Fi name of this mesh to in my particular case I call it home in Portuguese which is casa and that is it if I have the same name right over here and the same name right over here with the same exact password I will be able to go around my house regardless if it's one model or another different model I will be able to have internet all over the place now one thing that we will notice if we test it out is that the handoff will be quicker if I change from this one to this one and to this one with my phone while moving around then moving to this one because it's not on the mesh but it works just fine. If we are not doing speed tests, we won't note. Just out of curiosity, the end off. I did test out, made a few tests, and starting here on the office uh, with max speeds, and then I start climbing the stairs, and the speed starts to drop a bit. Then in the living room, where we start to enter, it will pick up the signal once again of the unit that it's on the ground floor, and it will restore the maximum speed. And the same will happen when I do the invert. So if I leave the ground floor and start moving towards here the basement, it will start losing signal and on the stairs will be the worst 
place but then once we reach here the level of the basement it will gather the signal from the B25 unit that's here and we will get maximum speeds once again. So that is something really really cool and one of the favorite things that I did enjoy about this including the Ethernet backhaul with access point mode which is awesome. Now compared with the Deco X10 which we have seen a few weeks ago this one by far in terms of range and in terms of speeds is total superior so if you have a large configuration like I do this is definitely the choice compared with the X10 which are a lot cheaper more or less half of the price but more or less half of the performance but comparing one to one this has a bigger reach so if you need a bigger reach this would be the smart choice but if I had to choose between one or two and if we select two then we will be on the price range of these three so if I had to select between two TP-Link GXE75 or these three the choices would be tough on one hand I will be able to spread the signal better with these three units on the other hand, having two of these units, I will have a bigger signal coverage because each one of them individually are stronger than each one of those individually. But if we have three floors, then I would say that the best choice would be three of these instead of two of these. And I'm just doing these comparisons because of price wise but there's also something that should be clear for those that are selecting between one system or other this is TP-Link this is TP-Link this is the Archer family this is the Deco family if you want something that you can manage on one single application then you will need to decide if you want to go the Deco family or if you want to go to the Archer family because although in my particular case I use two different apps to manage one and to manage the other and that is no issue whatsoever for me because I enjoy doing these things and I spend a lot of time doing tests and things like that so it's something awesome but for those that want to save time and just want to have one single app to manage everything and with just one app I want to see all the units as we did see the example today of the BE25 where I can see all these three and later on if I add the X10 and the other deck code that it's a different model but it's compatible with this right over here we will need to decide either these or on the Archer side. Both of them have a lot of choices. On this particular case, I use the Archer GXE75 and then I use the Archer Air R5, which are the ones that I use as access points to extend the signal. So I can see all of them on one app and these I can see all of them on the other app. Let's say, for example, that you decide to change the network name. Then you will need to enter the app for the Archer, change the network name. You will need to enter the Deco app and change the network name. That being said, hope that the video was helpful. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.